Be Kind Botanicals Facebook business page. I am Lola King. I am the registered aromatherapist and clinically trained certified aromatherapist for this business. I own and operate it. It is completely woman owned and operated, which is kind of a cool thing in this day and age. Still, I know it shouldn't be, but it is. A um, few things I wanted to share with you, and I'm going to try to remember not to say um too much. It's kind of like my Achilles heel. First of all, if you're joining me, thank you so very much for joining me. I know I wanted to post yesterday that I was going to do a live, but I wasn't sure what time today I was going to be able to do it, only because of the simple fact that today is crazy. Wednesdays are nightmares for me sometimes, and today was definitely one of those days. I had hoped that 4 o'clock was going to be the magic time that I could pop on and do this, but it turned out that five o'clock or a little after five is actually the magic time. <laughs> um, so if you are joining me, I'm sorry it's so late, but I do appreciate the fact that you're even joining me. And if you're catching the replay, pop on and say hi so I know that you're watching. I love interacting with you. So if you have any questions while we're going over this video, ask. I may or may not be able to see them. Facebook has just done another update for this page. I'm not really sure why they think updates are so cool to do so frequently, but hey, we're gonna roll with it. So, the topic today, wintergreen, liquid aspirin or no? Dr. Pappas has already covered what wintergreen is chemically. And before we get too far, I'll tell you a little bit um, about him. He is a chemist who does analytical work regarding essential oils. And he's also uh, the owner of Essential Oil University. And he's constantly busting myths that are put out there by enthusiasts who really, really, really want essential oils to be that magic, quick fix, if you will, that I know would make all of our lives easier. But there, of course, are some other pieces of information that everyone needs to know. So with Wintergreen, the first thing I'm going to say is I love Warner Green. I'm one of the few individuals. I don't have anything going on in my life that really stops me from doing it. Although, there are a few things that people need to be aware of. I have said it a million times. Aromatherapy, essential oil use, it's never black and white. Never, ever, ever, ever. I love using essential oils. I may not use them every single day. But when I do use them, I use them depending on my need. And when it comes to wintergreen, I do use it. And when I use it, I don't try to pretend that it's aspirin. And here's the reason why. Aspirin and wintergreen are made of two different chemical constituents. One is methyl salicylate and then the aspirin is something completely different. Now while they both might have similar characteristics, when they break down in our bodies, the byproducts are completely different. So the potential for what they do for us is different. That being said, there are also some other things to keep in mind. I know a lot of people are kind of fearful of it. And then there's some people that they just have no fear whatsoever. Well, both are not really what we should be doing. We shouldn't be afraid to use an essential oil, but we also shouldn't be using an essential oil without any regard for what may or may not happen. So what I'm saying here is with wintergreen, there are some contraindications. And if you have this fantastic book, it's a little backwards, sorry. It's Robert Tisserin and Rodney Young's Essential Oil Safety 2nd Edition. This book is an amazing tool for you to use if you are interested in using essential oils. It has tons of information about the different parts of the body, how essential oils work within those parts of the body, and then it goes into the specifics of essential oils. And I want to say there's like 400 different profiles for the essential oils, and this includes their chemical component profiles. It goes over safety, which 
yes, we do need to be aware of in this day and age. It goes over any kind of organ specific effects that these essential oils may or may not have. It goes over systemic effects and it, you know, Robert's really good about even putting comments in there and everything is cited in this book. There's not anything that's just taken because Robert just turned and said it. It's all backed up by scientific evidence. So this is a book that you really, really want. So digging into some of the hazards, contraindications, or safety concerns, the first thing is that it wintergreen does interact with drugs. So if you are taking anything because you're you're gonna have a surgery, and for example, your doctor says, hey, stop taking aspirin because we don't want your blood thinned out, wintergreen will do will have a very similar effect. So if you're using winter grain and you're going to have a major surgery, my advice would be if you can get away with using something else, use something else or try to avoid it right before and right after. Okay. The other thing is if you have issues in general with blood clotting, winter grain is probably not going to be the best choice for you, but you can use it. Please, please, please understand that wintergreen, while it has all these different cautions, it's not something that you should be afraid of. Now, because I've already mentioned that it has contraindications with people that have blood clotting issues, it is a contraindicator for anything, any kind of anticoagulant medication. So if you're taking anything because you need your blood thicker for whatever reason, don't use wintergreen, okay? Where if you have to use it, make sure you're working with an aromatherapist that can guide you so that you're using it in a manner that will work for what is best for you. The other thing is that if you have hemophilia issues, kind of works against that. Bleeding disorders, which really covers the blood clotting. And the big one, which not a lot of people are aware, is pregnancy. And this is for all routes, guys. So topically, internally, inhalation, it, you do want to avoid it if at all possible because there are other alternatives in aromatherapy. If you're breastfeeding, you should probably try not to be using it. We have not found enough evidence scientifically to back up whether it is passed it to a newborn or not. So, and obviously nobody's gonna want to do any kind of labor laboratory experiments on a newborn. I mean, it's just, it's not ethical, it's not moral. So we're, we're saying avoid it. Uh, the other thing is if you have any kind of reflux disease, wintergreen is also contraindicated for that. Um, and that's for oral. So if you're taking it orally, that it's a no-no to take it orally. If you're using it topically for something, by all means. Now, in Robert and Rennie's book, it says maximum adult daily oral dose, 175 milligrams. Now that is based off a certain, off the average healthy adult weight. It's not just a random number thrown in there. So if you weigh, you know, less than 100 pounds, you may want to rethink taking 175 milligrams because this is very dose specific. The other thing that I wanted to touch on with wintergreen, which is kind of an interesting thing, is that it does have a maximum dermal use level of 2.4% that's listed in the book. Now, if you have it in a rollerball and you have it diluted down to 2.4% and you're putting it just some little tiny spot on your body, you can make it go up a little bit higher although you do want to watch for reactions because it can cause reactions on the skin. So start with less and increase if you need to. My, my rule of thumb when I'm using Lunar Green is one, I try not to use it by itself. I try to use other essential oils with it that are skin healing if you will, or skin soothing rather. That's probably a better term, skin soothing. So I like to mix it with orange or cedar wood or even lavender, you know, something that is going to give it, you know, a little bit of a buffer so that it's not straight wintergreen 
and then whatever the carrier oil is. Because in this manner, then you can use a little bit more of the total blend that you're using. So if you need to use 10 to 15% in a roller ball, you can because you've used other essential oils. So always keep this in mind. And, and this is kind of why I've said earlier, it's not black and white. There's different things that you can do to get around and the information that is in Robert's book, it's not meant to be a black and white definition. It's meant to be a guide, something to steer you down the path of using essential oils in a safe and balanced manner. So let's not try to muddle the waters and say you can only do this or you can't do that or you can always do this. Always, never, it just, it's not a good thing with aromatherapy. So in general, if you're using it, say I used wintergreen recently, I was really, really sore. I wanted to see how effective a blend was that I was working on. I was really sore and I done some pretty good amount of work to my hip flexor. So I rubbed it on. And I want to say I had like 5% dilution for the entire blend. Not really enough to shake a stick at, but it got the job done. So in regards to that 2.4, depending on the surface area, the amount that you're actually using in your roller balls can go higher or lower because it's really how much is actually being absorbed into your system. So wintergreen, not liquid aspirin but it can be very soothing for your muscles if you're having any perception of sensitivity or anything like that. So that's wintergreen. I don't want you to be afraid of it. I want you to be able to use it and I certainly don't want you saying, yes, it's completely safe, use it undiluted, use it this way, X, Y, Z. Just go with the balanced approach, guys. Try to take it one step at a time. Look at things. If you can, like I said, get this book. And if you can't get the book right away, message me if you have a question and you're wanting to use Wintergreen because I'd be more than happy to help you. I just don't want this no, you cannot use it philosophy that has been put out there by so many people. Yes, there are concerns with using it, but you can absolutely use it safely if you're not an individual that's pregnant, breastfeeding, or a very small child. And I don't have an age that's listed for a small child, but in the interest of safety, if it's, you know, someone that's two or younger, I personally, I avoid it. If I don't, if I can find something, you know, that will work as well as it for even five and under, I'll use something else. But again, there's not a no never here. It's a matter of your comfortability and if you're not comfortable work with somebody who's willing to work with you okay so that's my message about wintergreen it's not black and white stop saying always stop saying never and just really dig into more of the information that's out there all right guys that's it and I'm probably gonna try to pop back on tomorrow it'll be a surprise because I have a few things that I really need to work on and get out to you but I also have a table that I'm working on I'll have to show you that project tomorrow maybe. Got to get the sander out tonight. <laughs> it's kind of a big funny thing anyway. I'll talk to you guys about that another time. In the meantime, get to know wintergreen. It's a fun essential oil to use and can be very helpful, but it does have cautions. All right, that's it. Have a great one.